You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. Farm to Table Weddings, episode number 126. Before we get to Farm to Table, we have to thank our new Patreon, Kelly Buchan of the Simply Organized Teacher.com. She is our first patron on Patreon, <laughs> and we really, 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 really thank you. Um, I did a little uh, chatting with her, and I, and I asked her about her business, and, and she is a teacher, and her, her blog is a space to share her thoughts, ideas, knowledge that she's gained from become, being a teacher, basically. And each Tuesday, she posts a new blog with tips and tricks to help others have a simply organized classroom, which, I mean, I know a lot of teachers are really crafty and organized anyways, but some of them might need some help. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think that, you know, if you are any, if you are a teacher and you're at all interested in organization, check out her blog. Yeah. And thank you again, Kelly. We really appreciate that. So we invited one of our friends to talk to us about Farm to Table because, again, we are not experts in Farm to Table. Nope. And we are not wedding planners on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So we just, we, we don't have the connections. But anyway, we invited her over to talk about Farm to Table. I think she gave us some great information. What do you think? Yeah, she did. And it's, and it's amazing what a community can do to get together and make a wedding come to, you know, come to pass or Mm -hmm. whatever. And farm to table to me means intimate family oriented and things like that. So Mm -hmm. my, if I had a farm to table wedding, it would be small. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, (laughs) I think that would just have to be. Yeah. I mean, I can, you know, the way I picture it is a long, long table mm -hmm. with just the food in the middle and really minimal decor. Mm hmm. You don't really, you know, let the food speak. Exactly. Let the food be the decor. Yeah. Yeah. So listen in and then we'll be back. Co-owner of not only Woodland Meadows Farms, but also owner of Activity Girl Consulting, Ami Quiriconi is here today to help us explore the topic of farm to table weddings. She is an entrepreneur, inventor, product designer, and a boss. Ami joined Woodland Meadow Farms in 2011 and has been tirelessly building it and Dairyland Farms into a premier wedding venue here in the Snohomish area. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. We're glad you could join us because we are not experts in this farm to table thing. (laughs) It's a new movement that we've seen and we had somebody contact us and say, you know, what do you know about farm to table weddings? And we're like, not much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. But, you know, it's very interesting and in doing the research in it, you know, what it's all about and how cool that is. And it's it just seems to fit here in the Seattle area. It's just perfect for this area. And so glad you could be here to help us oh, explore absolutely. this. <laughs> Usually we start off with a little bit of your journey story. Do you want to give that to us? Sure. Um, I actually am a transplant from the Midwest. So I grew up in Kansas. So um, I had moved away from Kansas thinking that I was going to be coming to the big city and then only to find myself like almost 20 years later moving right back out to the country again. (laughs) So um, I ended up out in the Snohomish area, um, just, you know, met a guy, fell in love, moved out on his farm. And next thing you know, I'm in the wedding business. Um, But I had actually spent uh, many years here in the Seattle area in sustainable development. Um, I was a lead accredited professional with the U.S. Green Building Council and worked on the first fire station in the entire country to be certified as a green building. Oh, wow. Um, and then I worked for the city of Issaquah and as a sustainability development director. And then I invented a product called Squawk Mountain Stone. Gosh, it's been my son's 15. So it's been 15 years since I did that because I was a stay at home mom and got a little <laughs> stir crazy. And so I and just said, hey, I need to do something. And blah, there I was. Mm-hmm. Um, got my master's in environment and community and then spent, you know, 10 years working in the sustainability movement. And so farm to table while new to you guys is a concept that, you know, I'm quite familiar with in terms of that. So mm-hmm. Um, and then left my, I retired from my manufacturing business and, you know, took the opportunity again to kind of move out and change pace a little bit and Mm -hmm. saw this farm that John had in his wedding business he had going on and said, well, this looks pretty interesting. Let's Mm -hmm. see what I can do here. (laughs) And so then there you go. Here we are six years later and, and going to town on it. So 
Yeah, it seems to be very successful, too. Yeah, um, it has been. And I think it's a little bit of being able to blend um, because of the Seattle area has been quite eco conscious. Mm -hmm. um, And they, um, as a community, have been uh, very supportive of, you know, uh, an agrarian lifestyle. And so if you can actually really speak to people and show them. And, you know, one of our things is like niche. Um, we like to make sure that everybody as unique as they are, have a place that they're welcome to. And so that's been really the spirit behind what we do mm-hmm. out there. And so we've been, um, I would say completely lucky, but yes, very <laughs> you know fortunate that we've had such a great appeal to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just going to go right into talking about farm to table. How do you plan a farm to table wedding reception? The principles of farm to table um, are rooted in the fact that um, a lot of small farms um, that grow food, you know, the normal way of bringing your food to market is either going to like a farmer's market um, and sitting there at a table and selling your carrots and your heads of lettuce and Mm -hmm. eggs and stuff like that. And um, there's a lot of time and energy involved in doing that. And you're also selling it and trying to compete um, against a grocery store that is, you know, getting from commercial farming Mm -hmm. and they're getting it in bulk and through distribution and stuff like that. So what some small farms started to do is they they started to create product. Um, So we call this value added agriculture. So instead of selling you the head of lettuce, the recognition was is that if I can turn the lettuce into a salad and a meal and an experience, I I get two things. One is I've increased the value of the thing that I've grown on my farm for Mm -hmm. you because it's worth more to you as a meal prepared for you. Um, But then also small farms were using this as an opportunity to introduce their farm to potential customers who then might return and find them at a farmer's market Mm -hmm. or come directly to their farm or sign up for their CSA, which is community sponsored agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so it was a link of being able to put that together. And so when we see people looking for that experience in their wedding, that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to remove the barriers, as many of them that there are or uh, pieces in between Mm -hmm. the farm and their own experience. And, um, and so a farm to table wedding, um, or farm to wedding, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes can be anything from the food to, um, in our case, we have 15 acres of flowers with Florida culture. So, you know, our couples can actually buy flowers off the farm and have them right on their table there as well. Um, it can be drinks. It can also just be, um, uh, you know, a myriad of ways of, of being able to engage as directly with a farm as closely as possible and cutting out a lot of middlemen and women. Right. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. When a couple is planning, they want to have this, where would they even go to look for this? So probably the best place is to find your farm. <laughs> um, and, you know, to be honest, not every farm grows everything. Right, uh, right. Farms are specially, you know, specialists. Um, a lot of farms in our area, like smaller farms that tend to participate in CSA agriculture mm-hmm. um, um, and growing small amounts of food and selling them at farmer's market are going to be really small farms. They're not always necessarily going to have the facilities to host a bigger event or a wedding. Mm -hmm. So in contrast to that, like in the Snohomish area, the big farms that are actually able to accommodate, actually very few of them actually grow food right Mm -hmm. on the farm. They grow something for a commodity product or, you know, whatever. Um, And so if you start with your farm and you um, select that, then you can have an engaged conversation with the farm owners. You know, for example, we can actually help you because we'll know where sources are. Right. Um, um, we also tend to, you know, know which restaurants in the area or caterers in the area do support and buy directly from farms. There may be um, a few planners and coordinators in the community that have done this quite often, mm-hmm. um, but I think that you're you're really your best bet is start with start, start with farm. where you want your event to happen. <laughs> um, and like I said, you know, some some farms mm-hmm. don't do weddings and events; they just do farm to table dinners, mm-hmm. and so that means they're um, a very small group, 40 people, 50 people maybe, yeah. um, that are coming out and having a meal prepared by a chef as opposed to a catering company. Um, but mm-hmm. if you're going down the wedding route, um, you're going to need to um, probably work with a like a catering company that can serve a lot of food, but find them that knows how to right. you know source from farms. So yeah, but yeah. unless yeah. you're doing like a small intimate wedding or yeah. you want that as maybe you could do that as your I don't know, reception yeah. or your well, I, you know, practice. In the research I've dinner. done, most farm-to-table weddings are more intimate mm-hmm. in, because they want that sustainability element in their in their reception or whatever. And also, I think they also have to be kind of lenient with what kind of product that they get, too, mm-hmm. because of the seasons. Yep. 
Yep. So, and that definitely um, is a huge, huge factor. So, finding people that are used to preparing seasonal foods, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and making that like a core value of your wedding. I mean, defining that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't mean that if you have a big wedding, you can't have a farm to table right. experience at all. There are, um, there are, again, the Seattle area has just got mm-hmm. tons of really great food um, people that are out there, you know, looking to support as much as they can in terms of right. local agriculture, um, and even in Snohomish. There's a few restaurants that do cater that are That's committed cool. to um, supporting local farms and purchasing from local farms. Yeah. Um, and so you can have the big experience and still be able to have y- your your food experience um, come from either local sources or at least from a farm somewhere in mm-hmm. the western Washington area. If a couple wanted everything, you know, straight from the farm, mm-hmm. is there some kind of like group of farmers that like work together for weddings and events? I mean... So like they find your your barn and you guys provide the drinks and then some another farm provides the food and another farm provides the floral, you know, is there a way to do that? There is a way. Um, I don't know that there's a formal structure for doing that okay. presently, but, um, you know, if you, again, that's where a great planner or coordinator yeah. that's really ready to go with that and, and communicating with the farms. And so if, if somebody came to us and said, we want to have everything come from Snohomish County, mm-hmm. well, we could certainly help with that as mm-hmm. I'm sure some of our other farm farmer friends that mm-hmm. are out there in the community, the other venues that are owned by farmers. Um, and it would say, I, now I'm not going to go track down everybody, right. but I'm going to sit down <laughs> with the planner and I'm more than happy to say, here's some resources that you mm-hmm. should start to, to seek out and look into. But a coordinator could definitely do that. Um, and it takes a little homework, but you know, a small farm is looking for any way that they can to be able to promote their product again True. and, and value added agriculture. You know, like I said, I can't say enough about that. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's the basis of why we, you know, want to do this. And so if a farm can actually, you know, provide the protein that they're, they're and what I mean is by the chickens or the turkeys or, you know, any of the other things, and they can directly get that sourced in. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of those things actually in the Snohomish area. So, um, I haven't had the privilege of working with somebody that's gone, like we want a hundred percent, all of it. Um, but I know that we could, we could help facilitate something like that, but yeah. I think that'd be so fun. Yeah. I mean, somebody needs to do that, yeah. right? Get yeah. some kind of a, a group together and be well, like, okay, you're on yeah. flowers, you're on food, <laughs> yeah. you're on protein, you know. Yep. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Yep. But, the, you know, the main piece of her information was have a good coordinator. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of our main pieces of, you know, advice yes. to all of our couples yeah. is have a good coordinator. Yep. Because that's just a big project management job. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah, it's like the true. sources are there. You just yeah. have to start to put it all together mm-hmm. and have it, have it fall in place. So, that's true. And yeah. do most um, barn venues have... Uh, planners on staff? Um, not all of us. Um, okay. I know that um, we particularly don't for a reason of, you know, our message is that everyone is welcome. And mm-hmm. so we don't have a short list of people that we require that you use because we want everybody to come out because sometimes sure. we meet so many amazing professionals that, you know, mm-hmm. do their job well and we don't want to exclude anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, some smaller um, venues tend to do that. Um, and they, they do that for the purpose of it being another revenue stream for them mm-hmm. because being a small smaller venue means you have a limitation on what the value of your space is. You know, mm-hmm. you can't charge as much as a bigger venue can because you don't have as much. And so they provide a value added service, which mm-hmm. is, well, we'll do your coordination. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are some farms where, um, you know, you can come in and, and these are questions that the couple should just ask, you know, mm-hmm. how much do you include? Yeah. But there are some farms that are like, we can cook, prepare and mm-hmm. plan and do all of that. And they do tend to be for smaller events, you know, right. under 100 people for, mm-hmm. you know, 40 to 50 and that kind of sure. thing. So it's a, a real white glove experience with them would the couple be able to meet the farmer and the chef and if they want that whole experience that way yeah i think that if they ask for that and if that's something you know i'm not sure um like coming out and meeting us we're all that exciting you know Um, (laughs) but but, you know see where the food comes from oh absolutely yeah Yeah. and like the the quintessential farm to tables Mm -hmm. um that's what you get is you actually get that really intimate relationship and that's why i said it's about removing the barriers Mm -hmm. between your food and the source of the food Mm -hmm. um and so with the with the smaller farm to tables if you if you've been able to hire a chef that has come out and you know worked with everything that they've been able to source right Mm -hmm. there on the spot um a part of that usually is this education of how they prepared the food and um you know why they did it in that way and that way again it's 
um, connecting people back to the sources that, you know, food is a grown product. It's a mm-hmm. farmed product. It's not just sitting on a cool misty shelf at Safeway or Albertsons, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, or even Hagen's for that matter. Yeah. So, yeah. And even if you go and it's a local produce, you still don't know where it came from right. or who grew it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why people like farmer's markets. Yeah. Um, you know, they go to a farmer's market and what I've seen from talking with other farmers that do that, you know, we don't do farmer's markets because, uh, you know, just uh, beverage farming and in what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do because my, my world is in marketing and agritourism as well is, you know, you talk to them and they, they gain like favorites. And so people Mm -hmm. do go to a market and they find a farm that they like Mm -hmm. to support. And even though you can have 10 stands all with the same stuff, people do kind of gravitate to their favorite farmers. And so um, there, people want that connection. And when they're going down that route, they're looking to have that personal one-on-one relationship with the, their source. Mm -hmm. Um, It gives you a sense of security and well-being, knowing how it's being grown or how the animals are being taken care of or any of that. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, questions that the couple should ask. Mm -hmm. Do you have some more questions that the couple should ask when going to a farm? Yeah. I mean, if they're looking for farm to table, I mean, Mm -hmm. if they're really, um, you know, sometimes people just want a cool barn. I mean, to be honest. (laughs) True. (laughs) true. So um, they're they're just like, we just want the cool space to it. But um, when somebody is committed to being able to do like the full farm to table experience, I would say don't rule out a farm if they don't have your food, you Mm -hmm. know, there. Mm -hmm. Like I said, um, farming is a specialty activity. Not everybody does it. Um, They don't all grow the same things, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a good experience there. But, um, you know, asking them if they know of other sources where they could could get local food, um, where they could uh, purchase um, or have a chef or a catering company purchase. Sometimes farms that are in the business of agritourism and weddings and events do are, are linked into the community the mm-hmm. way that many of us are. Um, and because really what's going to define the farm itself is not going to um, control your outcome as much as probably your catering. Farm to table is mostly about the food. Mm. And so finding a good catering company. And so if the farm doesn't know that, then the couple's probably going to have to do some research mm. and ask a few questions and um, find a, you know, I know Fair Start Cafe, and I, I like to mention those. Uh, they're in Seattle. Um, they do source um, locally a lot and because they've got a commitment to those things. Um, but uh, not every catering company is going to be willing. You know, they've got right, food, food arrangements and contracts mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, the other parts are, you know, does the farm itself have something that they can provide? Like I said, they may have flowers on site. They may have some other agricultural items. Maybe it's one small piece, you know, maybe they're mm-hmm. a raspberry farm. Yeah, and so they true. just are like, we're going to go with raspberries and throw them in all the drinks <laughs> mm-hmm. and all the desserts and, and yeah. all that stuff. Um, but I, I guess at the end, um, if they really are going to work hard at doing that, again, I'm going to circle right back to mm-hmm. planner coordinator. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you need a project manager that can pull the pieces together. Um, if they're you know, not sitting at a farm that's already like we are farm to table. We do it all for you. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay. Any other questions you can think that they should ask either their planner or uh, the farm? A farm to table or farm to wedding experience mm-hmm. um, can be the space, the food, the decorations, mm-hmm. um, and those three things. Right. right? Okay. And so and the decor, meaning that is the decor from the farm or from mm-hmm. another farm. Is it nature based? Is it uh, lavender right. grown in, a, in the area? Is it um, or on the farm? You mm-hmm. know, is it hops? You know, people ask us for hop binds. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. they ask us for hop binds, though, in June <laughs> um, and they aren't there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, but there is something about that. And I guess that does elicit a question is understand the season that you're getting right. married mm-hmm. in and what is available at that time of year, because mm-hmm. June is different. And what? Uh, uh, we deal with that with flowers a lot. Everybody wants dahlias right mm-hmm. away. And it's like, well, no, dahlias are fall. Oh. Like they're at the late summer, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when our couples are inquiring about flowers, you know, our growers like hit me up two weeks before your wedding and we'll see what's coming up out of the ground or mm-hmm. what I've got available. Mm-hmm. And so um, there's got to be some flexibility. You know, it's Absolutely. hard to define a farm to table wedding and be explicitly rigid with every element right. of it because even in um, even if a farm grows something, we're dependent on what the weather's going to do True. for us. You know, mm-hmm. um, last mm-hmm. summer our hops did terrible because we started with a great spring and then it rained, yeah. and they don't mm-hmm. like rain; they want <laughs> hot, dry. And so we didn't have any, you know, very few um, cones to pick for beer and stuff at the end of the summer. So <laughs> um, I think a couple needs to have flexibility with being able to do that. Right. I think that's an important piece. So and I also think it's more of a relaxed atmosphere too. I, I wouldn't want to go to a farm to, you know, farm to table wedding, it being stuffy and formal and, you know, just, yeah. I, to me, it seems like it's relaxed. It's family, you know, family kind of oriented and things like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That's that, just my opinion. 
Yeah. That's how I, I would envision yeah. it. Because, I mean, you're sharing a meal together. Mm-hmm. That's usually what it is. It's not supposed to be stuffy. And, <laughs> yes, I want chicken or fish. Or, you <laughs> right. know, I mean, yeah. it should be just very nice and relaxed. Yep. Mm. So I think the farm to table thing kind of goes hand in hand with like recycling and being very conscious of all that stuff. How does that usually work? It works in a variety of ways. Um, Most farms, you know, like we compost the food and actually reuse the food on site because we have we have chickens. And Mm -hmm. I tell everybody chickens are really just feathered pigs. Mm -hmm. They eat anything. And so we do collect all that. And so that can be a big piece of it is making sure that, you know, you're able to at least take all the greenery and be able to like leftover flowers and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And and to be able to have that composted someplace. Um, So will they eat flowers, too? uh, No, the the flowers (laughs) just go in with the rest of the compost. Okay stuff um no but they'll eat uh, they'll eat the food and um i do exclude meat because we don't need to yeah. needlessly attract more predators plus uh, little people get creeped out by chickens yeah eating. Uh, yeah it's kind of weird chickens but, eating chickens <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah they're all yeah anyways like i said feathered pigs um but they'll eat styrofoam for that matter so we gotta <laughs> you gotta keep it under control um but yeah that can actually be a piece but that's not usually um i guess the the real i guess the intent and the germination you know no pun intended mm-hmm. here um with the farm to table movement is the is the value added piece to it mm-hmm. that you're you're giving an opportunity for a farm to um, take something that's normally thought of as a commodity mm-hmm. and has low value, um, you know, it's, uh, which is just our food sources. And you're you're allowing them to prepare it for you mm-hmm. in a way that they can gain more financially off of it because it's really about being able to support farms mm-hmm. and their food sources and um, and their livelihood at doing that. And that's that's the spirit behind it. It is to take the the need and the desire people have to know where their food is coming from and whether it's grown and harvested well and there's not a lot of chemicals on right. it and that, you know, the animals are free range or humanely treated. Um, and the farm being able to say, like removing the barriers, uh, you know, and there's all transparency there. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so it, it should be, in, in my opinion, when we think about a farm to table, it's not just a cool cliche thing to be mm-hmm. able to do that. The, the reason behind it is, is mm-hmm. that you're supporting. And um, yeah. so the, you know, the experience when you can find, I mean, I actually do encourage if you can find the small farms that actually offer a genuine farm to table mm-hmm. and they have a chef on site and they're using their kitchen to cook or, you mm-hmm. know, any of that stuff. I mean, seek them out and support them 100 percent, right. you know, all the way. Yeah, because so. I really don't and I really don't think like because we were in the floral business. My clients did not know where my flowers came from. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm saying except for one of them. Yeah. That yeah. actually asked. Yeah. yeah. She wanted she wanted salmon safe local flowers. And yeah. I'm like, OK, we'll source them out. Yeah. And Seattle has an awesome Seattle girls co-op in downtown and that gathers from them. But also they don't realize most of the flowers come from South America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I tell them that, and they're like, "Really?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, that's why I can get you such and such flowers, you know, in the spring." Yeah. Oh, okay. And I would love to have been able just to do, you know, flowers for seasonal flowers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But it, you know, most clients want they want the, you know, the peonies in mm-hmm. January or something like that. And so anyway, yeah, but. No, and you bring up a great point, too. And that's why, um, you know, like I said, there's 15 acres on Mm -hmm. our property. And it's funny because I'll have these conversations with couples and they'll, you know, and I'll point out the flower fields and they kind of have that odd look on their face of like flowers. And I'm like, well, we were going to go to the the farmer's market down in downtown Seattle and buy them. I go, well, you could or Mm -hmm. you could save them the trip from driving over there and they'll just bring them to you. And they're Mm -hmm. like, what? And I go, most of those flower growers are right here in Snohomish County, (laughs) just acres of them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so um, and then that just like the light goes off and they just Mm -hmm. you know like oh my gosh and then you know and again um the way we do it is we stay out of the middle we we connect the couples directly to the grower so Mm -hmm. that they receive the maximum benefit Mm -hmm. from the dollars and not having any intermediaries in there and a lot of people so we do have that you know flowers are an easy Mm -hmm. thing to do off of our farm because they're they're right there right um but you know like i said you have to have it's part of that experience is the flexibility Mm -hmm. of understanding that things can happen in farming and seasons Mm -hmm. do change and um you know apples are always one of those things too it's like when you're buying an apple right now apples are fall 
fruit. Right. Mm-hmm. And we have lost a relationship with growing cycles because yes. of grocery stores. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, and that happens not only on food, but as you point out with flowers mm-hmm. as well, is that mm-hmm. flowers don't grow, you know, all the time. And so, um, you know, let's go back to a question you might ask is like, well, what can I expect in June versus October? Yeah. Because I do have that conversation with people as well. Right. Um, one of the things that, you know, I had an interest in doing is we have a bunch of small CSAs around the area. And so again, community sponsored agriculture. So it's like a membership. You can mm-hmm. join up for a farm and then they deliver food to you um, based on the season. Right. And um, the retention on those can be quite low because people get these boxes of things they've never seen before. Right. They don't know what to do with them, <laughs> cook with them, um, or they'll spoil because they don't know how to preserve, right. can, True. store. Mm-hmm. And um, so when you when you talk about like, let's go back like a hundred years before we had like a refrigerator or two in everybody's home, we had root cellars. And, mm-hmm. and so part of the idea was is, could you um, get people and teach them with their food? Like, okay, now it's going to spoil, but before it does, this is how you do to save it. Because in the winter, when you're not growing anything and the ground is bare, Mm -hmm. um, how do you eat? And nobody thinks about how they would eat. (laughs) No, not anymore. Same thing that applies to, you know, if you're decorating for a wedding, what's actually out there? I mean, there's Mm -hmm. a, a, that increases the foliage that you could use, you know, and, and it changes the, the shape of your space and the decor of your space. If you actually did it on a seasonal basis Mm -hmm. and, you know, and it could be exciting, but yeah, you're right. Some people just want, right. I want roses. They want, yeah. I want yeah. roses and I want, you know, peonies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tulips. And thing, yeah. I want tulips in October. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, I, I just can't imagine living like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I mean, <laughs> there's always oranges in the, in the grocery store. So right. I mean, why I know, wouldn't we have I was, oranges? I was thinking the other day when I was walking to the grocery store, like, where do those apples come from? Yeah. Right, now? Yeah. <laughs> right. a freezer. Yeah. They come out of a yeah. freezer. Yeah. They get stowed away in a freezer yeah. and brought back out and then mm. uh, set out for a bit. And yeah. then, yeah. 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 And, but if you think of the Rainier cherries, they're not out all year. Right. They're only out at a certain point, right? Yep. So, yep. There's that seasonal element. Yeah. And yeah. so they, they, they're they coming around right now. Mm-hmm. So, I know. I keep yeah. looking for them. <laughs> Our listeners know that Shannon and I prefer beer <laughs> over wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you guys do beer yep. at your um, yep. at your venue. So, uh, is that a seasonal thing too? Um, yeah, parts of it are seasonal. Um, mm-hmm. So, if you're wanting to pull things off the farm, certain flavorings um, like strawberry. Um, mm-hmm. Strawberries are right now starting to you know our strawberry plants on the farm are you know the berries are starting mm-hmm. to bud and all that other stuff. Um, you know, doing ginger in the fall, mm-hmm. um, and so there are seasonal <laughs> elements to it. Now, hops again grows. You know, you can preserve hops. You can dry them uh-huh. out um, and and reuse them later. Um, but any if you want any of the fresh flavorings and stuff like that, mm-hmm. yeah. And so that's a part of that is to actually have the brewery doing seasonal beers. Mm-hmm. Um, you get your pumpkins, but the, the, the irony, and we've had this conversation, we actually had a meeting where we brought in local farmers and other local craft beverage makers together mm-hmm. and um, talked about the, the problem with the pumpkin beer is that you actually need to have your pumpkins to you though, before pumpkins are actually ripe on the vine. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so there's a, the challenge is, is um, the markets, for example, the grocery stores and the big brewers mm-hmm. are, you know, they're storing pumpkins and they're storing a pumpkin sauce and a pumpkin flavoring. And so that they can release a pumpkin beer like on October 1st, Mm -hmm. right? Well, you're just now harvesting pumpkins and processing them and get them in. And so some of our craft beverage makers have said, well, you know, the the hard thing about seasonal is that the big breweries beat you to it because they don't, they don't brew on a season, like, you Mm -hmm. know, and so you can't be a craft beverage maker and come out with your pumpkin beer a month after everybody else has, you lose the, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the challenges of small versus large, you know, micro versus macro is, um, you know, macro scale things drive, you know, uh, schedules in a way they're actually out of season and out of sync with the mm-hmm. reality of, you know, growing. Um, so yeah, for us, it's, that's kind of the, the fun part. We also, um, we have Christmas trees on the farm. And so oh, yeah. one of John's favorite beers, um, that we discovered is by Backwoods Brewing Company down in like South, uh, Washington and they have a spruce, uh, based beer. Really? So um, I'm actually right now working out in the beer garden um, down there is what I call it. It's really just my garden of yeah. all the things that we put in beers. Um, and so my beer garden is to um, add juniper this year yeah. um, so that we have a juniper flavor and then um, be able to have a dedicated uh, grouping of spruce trees so that we can actually use spruce boughs and yeah. to be able to make a spruce so that when it's Christmas season and we're talking about Christmas trees, you can actually get a beer that's flavored with a Christmas little bit tree? of spruce. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. A Christmas yeah. tree brew. I, yeah, 
I don't know. I wonder if I would be allergic to that because I'm a, trees are my enemy right now. Oh yeah, I'm a tree. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, ironically, it's like sunscreen and trees are killing <laughs> yeah. my eyes at the moment. So yeah. yeah. So let's say somebody wanted a specific type of beer for their wedding. Could you do something like that or? Is it really reliant on what's what's happening? Um, you know, the brewery right now does have like uh, eight different beer choices, mm-hmm. uh, pretty broad as it is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There is always a possibility of doing custom, but it can be um, it, it kind of makes it a little less efficient. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've we've all like had many conversations of like, well, if you were a customized beer shop, would that be helpful? And the truth mm-hmm. is, is that you are overwhelmed with so many beer decisions and oh, decorating decisions and, mm-hmm. you know, how many who's coming to the wedding decisions that it's it's been found that it's easier to just say here's eight pick your yeah. favorite two <laughs> and everybody's like that's enough choice for me right you know? we're always excited about whether or not there's something new and you know hearing but right now i think we the the brewers have done a great job they've got an amazing palette out there right now and then like i said looking to add in like this fall will be ginger so ginger's yeah. going in so that we can pull ginger mm-hmm. out and use it to make ginger beer like a gingerbread yeah. beer um <laughs> this fall know. yeah yeah so this fall, okay. Yeah, you're yep. gonna have to send on me my list here. <laughs> <laughs> so, where can our listeners find you and your farms if they want to contact you? So, we do have a fantastic website. I'm proud of it's at uh, woodlandmeadowfarms.com. And um, you can look up and just see what our farm is about and what we do. Um, the other thing that I always recommend for people, because the Snohomish area has, you know, over 20 venues and yes. most of them are farm locations, mm-hmm. you can go to my snohomishwedding.com and you can actually find a lot of the, you know, big farms and small farms mm-hmm. and start there. We have a lot of um, really uh, a great, vibrant agritourism community in Snohomish County. And usually that's a great starting point for then finding out like, hey, if I want to do a smaller event and I wanted to make sure that you know the food was coming in like I said I know that we know the you know we know the farmers around the area right. the big ones even the ones that don't do anything with weddings we just know who they are because right. we've of got course, those relationships yeah. and um, would be happy to help somebody if they wanted to be able to kind of like start to source and support other local local farmers in our community All right. perfect thanks Ami yes thank you you obviously love listening to podcast well have you tried an audiobook Hi, I'm Kim, and I am an audiobook listener. It's actually my preferred way to, quote unquote, read. And if you haven't tried listening to one yet, go to www.fromringtoveil.com slash free book to get a free audiobook from Audible. I may have just given you your new obsession. All right, so farm to table, intimate, smallish. Uh, very local. I mean, like, these are the things I think of when I'm thinking farm to table Mm -hmm. now. And like she said, the community growers. Yes. So bring the community into it. And always our one, our main piece of advice, Mm -hmm. get a good coordinator. Yes. (laughs) You know, I mean, that just makes sense, especially, especially if you don't live in the community. Right. Let's say you're coming over from from the bigger city to the Mm -hmm. country and you don't know all these farms and you don't have the connections. Mm -hmm. You would definitely want somebody to help you out with that, because that I imagine could be. And that's when you 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 interview your coordinator before you hire them and say, this is what I want. How are your connections to it? And can you make this happen? Right. I want all local food from the meat, the produce, the flowers, everything. You mm-hmm. know, so a couple of things on our end of it, mm-hmm. you know, that we kind of like is the decor mm-hmm. and how it how you could if you wanted to make this look like theme it or however right. you want to say style it. You know, like you said, the family style, the long wooden table mm-hmm. or you could have separate tables. Right. But, you know, more like a. I want to say a picnic table, but farm yeah. table, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the same kind of thing. I mean, even if you do round tables, it's just the fam. You know, make it. I think surrounded by food. Mm-hmm. You know, make it family style. Stick the dishes in the middle. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and you know they'll be artly prepared, artfully prepared. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's all the color you need. They'll be local. They'll be, you know, seasonal. Mm-hmm. So there's your decor. No special seating arrangements. No. Let let people sit with who they want to sit with and. You know, as long as mm-hmm. as you feel like everybody can get along. <laughs> With it not being so huge, then yeah. it's you don't really have that yeah. headache. Go simple but elegant. Mm-hmm. Bring in the seasonal herbs. Bring in your seasonal flowers. Foliage. Mm-hmm. Natural linens like cotton mm-hmm. and 
I hate to say burlap, but <laughs> but yeah, you there are some really yeah. cute burlap things out right. there that 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 aren't real kitschy, mm-hmm. you know, and too rusticy, you know. But you know, natural things. Seagrass. Seagrass is one of my favorite things right now. There you go. Palm fronds. <laughs> no, I you know, even if you go into the farm mm-hmm. and see what they have and use that. Right. You know, I mean it could be ferns and Salal, especially up here, yeah. you know, that's that's really popular. And just lay that out on your table with your with mm-hmm. your foods. So, I mean, use your natural elements around you. Exactly. You know, you could even make it really fancy if you wanted to and do the linens and mm-hmm. napkins and all of that stuff if you wanted to. Right. I mean, it's totally up to you if you want to go more simple or, or more um, elegant, fan- fancy, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then there's also the, you know, there's the farm to table and that's all fresh food from local vendors and everything. And then you could kick it up and make sure it's all, you know, organic, GMO free, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it depends on what level you want to go to, how much you want to spend or c- can spend. Yeah. It's really doable either way, I think. Well, and I think most local, if you're going local and, you know, getting these small farms, most of them are organic and yeah. Things like that. I mean, I know there are, there are yeah, the, you know, the kind that they do, you know, some right. use stuff, but you just, you know, that's another question you would want to either ask the farmer or make sure your, your planner knows if right. it's important to you. Another piece of advice I would give would be have a backup plan because, you know, Mother Nature, like Ami said, you're not going, I mean, if it rained constantly you're and it wiped out a crop, you're going mm-hmm. to have to need something else. So you're mm-hmm. going to have to be a little bit flexible in very. your choices. Mm-hmm. I would say not a little bit, but very flexible. Yeah, because, I mean, a week before your wedding, they could not have something that you really, really want. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing you can really do right. about it. Unless you fly it in or right. buy it and whatever. Exactly. I totally, totally agree. Mm-hmm. You have to be very flexible, I think. Which is fine, you know, because then again, it's, it kind of brings in a an element of surprise, fun, and what are we going to get? As long as they know, like, if you're allergic to something or, or whatever, right. as long as they have the parameters, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Everything will be great. Like she said, everybody just really, there's a lot of people that really want just a cool barn. Mm-hmm. And we've said this before, they don't have to be rustic in right. in your decor. Because most of the barn spaces are blank canvases. Mm-hmm. You can do almost anything with them. But you can go rustic if you right. want. I mean, it's totally... You can go rustic to elegant to mm-hmm. formal and stuffy. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you want. Do it. Really, you can enjoy this farm-to-table experience from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. You know, ask them if you can come and take pictures in their farm. Right. Like Woodland Meadow Farms, they have trees. Mm-hmm. If you're getting married, I mean, it may you may do your engagement photos in the spring, but they have trees planted all year round. True. And if you're having, a, like I say, a... November or December wedding, go get your engagement pictures taken into the trees. And That's right. And who knows, they may have some packages of to do your engagement photos. Mm-hmm. So use the venue, get to know the farm. That way it'll be a more personal experience. Exactly. You. you could become great friends with them, you know, and <laughs> and then a lot of these farms, especially around here, have, have festivals and stuff like mm-hmm. for the fall and Pumpkin harvests and then probably tree cuttings. And if they raise berries, you can go pick your own berries. Yeah, I mean, it's it could be like a part of your life mm-hmm. afterwards if you live in the area. It could definitely be something that you bring your kids to later on. It just <laughs> it makes it even more special. Right. If you're still in the area, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really glad she joined us because that, that was very eye-opening and enlightening in right. my opinion. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please email us at info at farmringdevel.com or hashtag us on any of our social medias and we'll get back to you. You can also message us on Facebook. We've had quite a few messages mm-hmm. recently. Yes, thank you for those. If you go to our Patreon page, www.fromringdevel.com slash give, you will see that we have a couple of different rewards. Um, if you want to have a Skype call with us. <laughs> Uh, that's one of the rewards. So if you if you want to talk with us and ask us whatever, and we can give you whatever we can uh, um vast knowledge of there things. you go of wedding planning questions, whatever <laughs> you want to ask us about, we are happy to do that. So check out our Patreon page and see what uh, we have there to offer. And I guess that's it for today. Yeah. 
Subscribe to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Listen to it on the website, wherever you'd like. Until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com.